Hey, new friends. Uh, I'm not in a habit of making news videos for games, but since there's been a lot going on with the community, and not so much with the actual game, I felt the need to throw in my two cents. So shit's been moving fast, starting with this wonderful piece of drama everyone in the community bandied together and declared there would be a blackout on April 3rd. A blackout meaning anyone who wants to participate will have to stop playing for 24 hours. This is to apparently draw attention to the issues in this game. Then not too long after, as if by some miracle, Ubisoft responded with a maintenance alert revealing a game update. The map Riverfort is coming back, steel income will be increased across all matches, daily orders, side orders, and community orders, and new elite outfits will be added to the game. It's a small step in the right direction, obviously, although I've never really needed steel that much. At least it'll be less of a grind when I do decide to become some nerdy completionist and unlock everything from my character. The outfits are fine I guess, but the best part is probably the return of the map. They finally did explain why they were taken out, by the way, according to a recently posted page on the Ubisoft website titled A Word From Stéphane Cardin. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that French accent leak. Uh, anyway, according to the article, those maps were the only ones showing the highest rates of desync, and we want to reintroduce them progressively after our testing. It wasn't anything obscure or hard to explain, so I guess they probably thought they didn't want to pile more issues on top of the mountain of them already. The next day, they had a stream at around 1pm in which they touched upon a few classes and I didn't get to see it live but I watched a bit of it and I decided to get myself a summary since apparently they're going to have a written article along with each of the streams. Here's a list of changes that were mentioned. They didn't get specific but it does confirm some much needed balancing changes. Okay, so first of all, peacekeepers and their zone attacks and dodge attacks are being nerfed. The light chains might be nerfed as well. Warlord's headbutt will have a longer dodge window and if they whiff it, they'll be punished with longer recovery frames. Also, he won't be able to activate headbutt from all block stance unless he blocks an attack with it. Lobbingers are getting the big buff stick, damage being increased on all chain attacks. Chains will come out faster, side heavy guaranteed after long arm. They will have a hyper armor on zone attack and an impale guaranteed after parry. Nabushi's hidden stance is getting a fix on its use. You'll be able to trigger it in the same way Warlords and Conks trigger their all block. Now this is what surprised me the most, but my god did we need this. They're nerfing revenge gain by defense, injury, and attack. Revenge attack and duration will be nerfed as well. Debuff resistance no longer affects the counter guard break window off parries. I think the revenge gear nerf is one of the things that bothered me the most about this game. I was planning to release an entire video about it, but it looks like I won't have to. The only thing I'd like to mention though is maybe they could have left revenge by attack alone, or nerfed it less than the others. If it stays the same, it might encourage people to play more aggressively in group modes and help with the defensive meta a little bit. But my biggest beef was against revenge by injury since it rewarded players for getting hit, so I'm glad it's getting a nerf. Oh, and they are nerfing boosts a bit. They'll take 20 seconds to spawn after the round started so people won't fly off and away from their opponent just to play the buff collector game. They'll also take an extra second to grab it. Some buffs were mentioned for the Berserker and Kensei and a small nerf to Conquerors, but they have even less information on those, so we'll have to wait and see. I've always considered those two classes mid-tier, so if they do get a buff, I hope they don't go overboard. As for the conch, well the nerf should probably revolve around their shield bash, so you might see conchs who do something else other than spam it. So from what I've seen so far, it seems they've frantically done a 180. They know how bad things have gotten, and whether or not the devs disagree with public opinion on their game, they know they have to at least respond to it more often and more thoughtfully than they did before. Okay, so I feel the need to rant about the blackout. Yesterday I was going to chime in with a short video going against the idea, but I'm not even sure if it's still going to happen, given how many updates are coming out of Ubisoft HQ in the last day or so. The fact is, they already know their game is falling apart, unless you're trying to tell me every one of their employees collectively decided to gouge their five senses out, I'm honestly not sure what this would have done. They've seen our hate, they've heard our hate, and at this point I'm pretty sure they've felt our hate. Why send another wave of it when in all likelihood it won't directly affect anything, much less send a cohesive message? 
They're not the sort of company who can cut and run, leaving us with the broken game. They have their reputation at stake. A reputation Ubisoft has been working to fix for a while now, with a lot of setbacks made by the looks of it. In retrospect, after seeing Ubisoft's recently made promises, the blackout might have been the threat that was needed to get them to communicate more. It's dumb that it took one in the first place, but it's apparently what will expedite a response from a company like Ubisoft these days. So in addition to the maintenance update and the Warrior's Den dev stream, they've also said they're going to give us weekly updates on the state of the game, presumably, and what their plans are for it. They will likely be Thursdays, as they've said on the stream, so I guess we'll be looking forward to that. On the updates, I really think they need to start doing one of two things. One, have an ETA on when they're coming to us every time they're announced, or two, have an actual update schedule so we eliminate the panic and pressure that's being constantly applied by forumites and critics. I understand they've said they can't set any dates for anything because they're afraid of the incoming shitstorm if they fail to meet it. And with how sensitive things are, I understand the decision, but when things die down, they need to bring more stability to their updating process, both on patches and communicating with their users. I've said this in the last video, nobody likes dealing with uncertainties, especially in a game they've invested a lot of time and money in. Provide some stability and people will want to flock back, knowing eventually their concerns will likely be addressed next patch day. Okay, so I think I should probably end this here. Um, like I said before, I'm not in the habit of making gaming news videos. It's just that there's a lot that's been going on and I felt the need to commentate. This channel is really just sort of a creative outlet, or just a place to put things that look fun to me. But I do take it a little more seriously these days, so expect some more videos on For Honor, or anything else I want to cover really soon. And by really soon, I don't mean daily either. <laughs> Sounds like I'm really trying to subvert expectations here, but kind of am. I just want to have the freedom to post what I like. If you liked my video, like it. If you've got an opinion, post them. I want to hear them, and subscribe if you want to keep track of this random ass middle of the African desert channel. If a lot of these changes go through, I'll probably start playing this game again, which would be nice. Anyway, thanks for watching.